Yes. Yes. All right. Let's check it. Oh my God, my head hurts from this from this stress. I need a. I need to do exercise. Take your time. <laughs> no, it's not about taking time. I need to call Izzy, and I need to say, "Hey, what's going on with my account? Er erase, erase my card. Er erase my application. Erase my service." I'm going to go to Telmex. <laughs> but le va a contestar la operadora. Yes. No, it's like, yes, first you talk to the, I don't know, the, the robot. And then they ask you to go to, to the other place. But yes, I didn't know that. That's really crazy. I was surprised. I looked at my my bank account and it has uno cuatro nueve ocho cero 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 RFC and it's an RFC so I sent a message to my to my student he works in in El Sat I said hey man do you know this do you know this number he says no but I can find it for you give me one moment and he says it's comunicación no cable comunicación Morelia and I'm like, okay, so I Google it, and it's it's a it's a company in Mexico City. I I read the reviews. Oh no, son fraudes. Te roban el dinero. Te domicilan la tarjeta. Son rateros. Darara. Es una compañía fantasma. I'm like, wow. It, literally, all the comments are negative. So I call, and it's a it's a number from Guerrero. So it's a Mexico City company with a Guerrero number. It's obviously a fake company. And I'm like, how did they get my information? And I found, I did more research and they got the information from Izzy. Oh, I'm gonna kill those people at Izzy. I'm just kidding. I am, I am, I am, I am okay in the head. Hello, Jackie. Hi. How are you? What do you do? What you do when you do what you do? Welcome to the class. I'm fine. That's great. Number two, Jackie, what do you have? Surgeon. Surgeon, yes. And of course, this person is in the? D. D. Number three, yes, me? It's the broker. Stockbroker. Letter? B. B. Or Jackie? Contractor. Tractor. Company? Well, A. area? A. Number five, yes, me? Right. Right. Uh, and the num letter is what? C. C. And number six. That's a weird. What is number six, Jackie? Pediatrician. Pediatrician. Obviously B. All right. Um, Jackie, what is a stock broker? What is a stock broker? Do you know? Uh, I don't know who explain in English. Uh, it's like finance. Yes. Do they do they give you advice on money or do they help you make more money? What? Do they give you advice, suggestions on your money or do they help you make more money? They help you. 
Yes, they help you. Very good. Number seven, Yasmin. Tax advisor. Tax advisor. And the letter? B. Give me eight, nine, and ten, Jackie. I don't know, number eight. And number nine, she, she, she a trans nurse. Psychiatric. Psychiatric. Nurse, okay. And 10. Jackie, number 10. I don't know. You don't know? Oh my gosh. Do I know? Yasmin, Yasmin, do you know? Number 10? Interpreter. Interpreter. And that is C. Yasmin, can you finish number 12 and 11 and 12? Financial analyst B. Translator C. Analyst B and translator C. All right, great, good job. And number two, uh, what jobs are you suited for? Be what each person says about himself or herself. Write one area of work that each person is suited for and one area of work that each person isn't suited for. All right. So number two, Jackie, you read it, and Yasmin, you tell us what they are suited for. Number one or two? Two, sorry. I love words and I'm a pretty good writer. My friend often asks me to look over the paper for mistakes, and I enjoy that. I don't want a job with too much responsibility, like being involved in the planning or organization of a company. Okay, what are they suited for? Publishing. Publishing. Business management. Business management. Excellent. All right. And number three, Yasmin, can you read it? And Jackie, answer. I really enjoy building things in fact. I helped my dad design and buy a board for our farm last year. I'm not really good at things like reading and writing. I'm more practical, like I can imagine writing articles for a newspaper, for example. Jackie? I didn't do. Shoot. All right, she didn't do it. And well, I'm going to give you the answer. It is the construction industry. And if she is not suited for the journalism. Journalism. Very good. All right, and Jasmine, I'm very sociable. 
and love going to parties and events. I really like meeting people and I think I'm a good communicator. I get along well with everyone. I would hate being in an office all day and talking to people on the phone. I am suited for public relations. Very good. Not suited for um. Um, sorry. It's go, go ahead. Go ahead. Telemarketing. And Ismail, can you read number five, please? Mm. I'm a bit of homebody, so I don't want a job that takes me away from home a lot. One thing that interests interest, interest me is how companies promote their products to consumer. So she is suited for what? Um, advertising. Advertising and not suited for the travel industry. Very good. Teacher, I have a doubt. To Tell me. Telemarketing and advertising and journalists is not the same. Mm, kind of. See, telemarketing is. You know, those people that call you, like Santander, uh, HSBS, Telcel, Movistar, those people that call you, they are telemarketing. They are, they are not, like, an ad advertising is very different. A advertising is like, how can, I, how can I say, it's like, if you go on Facebook and, you know, you're on your, your feed, you will see... Um, I don't even know how you say it in Spanish. It's like comercial. You know, the, those those are like advertisements right there. When it, whenever you see, you know, a, something about, you know, promotions, they want to tell you about takis. I don't know if you saw that, those commercials on Facebook about takis and when they had a competition with Doritos and then Pepsi versus Coca-Cola, all of those are advertisements. They are promoting their company. And that's what advertising is. You know, you promote your company so you can receive more customers. And telemarketing, you, know, you call, you, you know, you call people so you can make them your, your customer. And journalism, well, Journalism is like for the news. You know, these people, they... Oh no, publishing. I, I know journalists. Publishing, telemarketing, and advertising. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so publishing. Publishing is, you know, th those people that are really good readers and they're good writers and they help you make a book. See, let's, I'm going to show you one of the books that I have. Well, that we, you all have because you all have this book. See, this is the touchstone. This is the touchstone book, it's full contact, right? Cambridge. It has this right here. It has this information right here, the authors. And I think that even in the back of the book, 
it has the publisher. Let's see, who is our publisher? The publisher is Cambridge University Press. This right here is the publisher. So this company, the publisher, you know, they, they read everything. They make sure that, you know, the words are correct. There are no mistakes, nothing crazy. And then, you know, they, they make it official, copyright, and then they, they, they move it. That, that is a publisher. I don't, do you know anybody who is a publisher? Yasmin? Yes. Do you know people who are publishers? No. No? Neither, right? Is that even a thing? Is, is that even common? I don't know. But I guess in the past, this was more appropriate, more normal. So, you know, just to, just to make it clear, you asked me about um, advertising. And that is promoting a company. And then you asked me about telemarketing. That is selling things on a phone. Tell, sell, Movistar. And then you asked me about publisher. People who read and edit books before they are official. You know, if, if I want to write a book and I will write a book one day, I need to take it to a publisher so they can correct my mistakes and things like that. And that's all. And then I am going to go to the advertising company so they can promote my book. And maybe I will talk to a telemarketer so they can call all of the English students in Acapulco and be like, hey, Fernando has a book, do you want to buy it? Maybe, maybe. Yes, me. Would you, would you write a book? Or not? Right? Yeah, would you write a book, like in the future? Maybe in the future. Oh my gosh, I need a beer. And I don't even like beer. Well, please get your piece of paper, notebook. We're going to learn the last piece of grammar from this book. But I don't, I don't want to explain it to you how I always explain. I'm going to, we're going to work into the explanation. You are going to figure out the explanation by yourself. So my question is, beautiful students, what are you doing? right now. Jackie, what are you doing right now? I'm taking English classes. Okay. Taking English classes. She's taking English classes. English, English. English classes. She's learning English. She's listening to the teacher talk. Okay. And, um, we all know that this is the present continuous, right? Because it's, it, you know, the present continuous is for things that are happening now. She's taking English classes. Perfect, perfect. And um, what will you be doing when you finish your English courses. What will you be doing when you finish your English courses? You know, this, well, maybe right now you have a plan 
or maybe you don't know, or maybe you have an expectation, or maybe you have like a goal. So I, I want you to think about it. You know, think about the time 4.30, 5, 5.30 and 6, you know, one hour and a half. When you finish your English courses, what do you think you will be doing? Tell me your expectations. I I'm gonna give you mine. When I finish with this course right here, I will be working with another English group. Look, I, I will be working with another English group. Will be working. Or maybe I will be studying for an important exam. Because I have an important exam soon and I need to study for it. Um, maybe I will be making more YouTube videos because, well, I, I am a YouTube maker. Take one minute and tell me what will you be doing when you finish your English courses? When you are ready, tell me so I can write it down. you're not 100%, maybe you can say maybe. Maybe I will be studying for an important exam. Or instead of will, you can say I might be making more YouTube videos. I may be working out at this time in the future. May, my, or in the negative, I won't be taking another language course. I won't, never again. Jacqueline. Are you ready? Yes. What will you be doing when you finish your English courses? I will be studying. Studying what? Uh, how to cover. About healthy. Oh, I'll be studying health. Like medicine and stuff, right? Yes. Okay, cool. And you, Mr. Coranza? I will be learning another language. Man will be learning another language. Like what? What language would you like to learn? I don't know. Japanese. Maybe 
Japanese. It's cool, man. Yeah, okay, man. Yasmin? How about you? I will be changing another CD. You don't say change, you will say moving. Okay. Which city would you like to move to? I don't know. All right. Nice, nice. So if you notice, you know, if you notice for for this right here, I am using the structure will be and the verb in ing form. Okay? Will be in the verb ing form. And this is for things for things that will be happening in the future. So they will be in progress. Okay? They will be in progress. Things that will be happening in the future. Right? They won't stop. It will be happening in the future. Like right now, you're taking English classes. This is not, you did not stop. This is something that is in progress. Those things that you said, Jackie will be studying health, that will be in progress. Not the beginning, not the end. She's in the middle. She's in the process. Ismail will be in the process of learning another language. Yes, we will be in the process of moving to another city. Maybe she will be putting her clothes in a box, or maybe she will be finding an apartment. You know, it will be a process. We'll be in the verb ing. Of course, when you are less certain, when you are less certain, you can use may or might be verb ing right may or might be um yasmin may be moving to dubai yasmin might be moving to dubai that's one option or you can say maybe i will be verb ing Maybe she will be moving to Dubai. All right. Another thing. Um, I will probably be verb ing. And um, if it is negative, it is a little different. Look, when, when it is affirmative, it is, I will probably be moving. Ismail will probably be studying or be learning Japanese. So when it is negative, probably is first, probably won't. When it is affirmative, probably is second, will probably, okay? Remember that, super important rules. And um, I didn't tell you this, but this will come on the exam. Come on the exam, it is gonna give you an example. What is correct? I will probably or I probably will. What is correct? And well, you know, when it is affirmative, first will, then probably. 
negative first, probably, and then won't. Okay? That is for things that you expect to be happening in the future. All of that goes together. Now, do you understand this or do you have any questions? If you understand, give me a thumbs up in the chat. Correcciones. understands. Um, Yasmin, Jackie, and Ismail, are there any questions about this? What is the difference between future, only will, and will plus B plus Verb with ing. Great question. All right. She said, What's the difference between will and the future continuous? What is the difference? Well, Jackie, Ismael, and um, Yasmin, it, it is the same difference between everything, you know, all the different tenses in the present, in the past, in the future. You know, we have two different types of, of sentences, two different types of verbs. We have simple sentences, and then we have continuous sentences. Now, a, a, a simple sentence would be, I, I, I take English classes. Continuous, I'm taking English classes. Now, what is the difference? If I say I take English classes, that's something, it sounds permanent. It sounds permanent, like it happens for a long time. Oh, I take English classes. What do you do at three o'clock? I take English classes, that's my habit. But if I say, hello? Oh, I'm taking English classes, let me call you back. If I say I'm taking English classes, that means in that moment, in that moment, it is in process. So basically simple, it can mean it's permanent, it's permanent or a long event or action or just a real fact, a real fact. That means like, um, fire is hot, water is wet. Acapulco is in Guerrero. You know, all of those things are facts. They are real. And um, something that is continuous, it will, it will be temporary or ongoing. Ongoing means in process. All right. Or background. Background means it is you know, not the most important thing. It's something that is not really important. For example, if I say, I live in Acapulco, I'm working as a teacher. In that case, I live in Acapulco is important and I'm working as a teacher is the least important thing. 
So that is the general rule. A simple is permanent, continuous it is temporary. But what about with will? It's the same thing. Is there a big difference? No, a, a lot of times you can, you can say both of them and it will be okay. For example, I will graduate next year. Me graduaré el próximo año. I will be graduating next year in June. Me estaré graduando el próximo año en junio. You know, if, if you say these, it's like the same thing almost. Me graduaré el próximo año, me estaré graduando el próximo año. It's like, well, one thing is like, you know, firm. And the other one is like, it will be a process. Do you understand, Jacqueline? Or no, be honest, be honest. Yes, I understand. Yasmin and Ismael, do you understand that? Yes. Yes. Smile, you're good. More or less. More or less. Great. All right, I'm going to write that very small and I'm going to put it over here. That's a good question, you know. Thank you for asking that. And um, like I said, sometimes both will be correct. You know, if you say I will graduate next year, that's correct. I will be graduating next year in June. You know, that's also correct. It just depends how you want to express it. You know, if you want to express that it's 100% it's sure, I will graduate next year. You know, if, if, if you want to express it as a process, I will be graduating next year. That means it will be happening. An expectation. Um, so, will be is for things that will be happening in the future, in progress. But what if, what if, What if it's not a process? What if it's not a process? What if it will be over? That means be finished. By a certain time. You know what, what happens you don't use the pre, you don't use the future continuous you use this yes me when did you graduate um, university Fifty January fifty last year. Okay. Yasmin graduated from university. Good 
last year. Okay, Yasmin graduated from university last year. This is finished, right? It's finished. It's, it's done. It's finished. It happened already. It happened in the past. But what do you say when you expect something to be finished in the future? What do you expect to be finished in the future? What will you have done by 2025? You know, what things do you expect to finish before 2025? L let me give you one of my examples. Um, I will have moved from Acapulco. You know, the, the, that is my expectation. I will have moved from Acapulco. I will have moved. I am gonna leave like Speedy Gonzalez. I expect this to be finished. This will happen before 2025. So I want you to think, you know, think about your life right now. August 8th, 2020. What are some things you will finish before 2025? I will have started my business. I will have started my business. I will have had a child. I want to have a child in three years. So if God is nice, I will have had a child by 2025. Now, I'm not telling you exactly when I am doing these things. But I am telling you that it will happen before that time. So think about it. What, what is one thing you will do before 2025? You will have done. Ismael, can you give me an answer, please? I will have started my university in two years. In two years. Jackie? Teacher, I don't understand why half and done. 
you don't understand what I haven't done? No. Just answer the question and I'll explain it in a minute. It's will have and the past participle. Mm, learned another language. So if, if I ask you, Jackie, uh, what will you have done by 2025? In Spanish, I cannot think of a translation for this one. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. I don't, I don't even know. No, I don't, it's not, it would not even be possible, I think. I think this is like an, like an English exclusive grammar. Because, you know, we, and, and that's one thing that I want you to understand. Some things you can translate. You know, some things you can, you can translate and they are easy to translate. Like, tengo, tengo tres niños, I have three kids. That's easy. And then some things will be difficult to translate. And then other things will be impossible to translate. It's not possible because we have different cultures and we express different things, it's, it's very like impossible. Like provecho, you cannot translate that to English. It will be impossible. You can say enjoy your food, but enjoy your food will be disfruta tu comida. And that is not the same thing. So, you know, I, I think that this is not possible to translate. I have asked other teachers and they can't either. And they know more Spanish than me. But I, I just want you to understand, Jackie, that this right here is called the future perfect. Okay, let me write that down. This is called the future perfect. We learned the present perfect, the past perfect, and now it is the future perfect. Basically, it is um, will, have, and then the past participle. You know, we use have and the past participle, had and the past participle, now it is will have and the past participle. And you use this to talk about things you expect to be finished by a certain time in the future. things you expect to be finished by a certain time in the future. Again, you, Ismael said Ismael will have started university in two years. He can say, I will start university in two years. I will start university. Only will. But it has a different attitude. If he says, I will start university in, in two years, that means it's a decision. And that's all. And, but if he says, I will have started university in two years, that means he expects it. He expects to pay. He expects to be in the university. You know, and it's almost the same thing, Jackie. Almost the same thing. But one is to talk about your expectations. You will start or you will finish this by a certain time in the future. And I will explain it a little bit more. Just give me, give me one moment to hear Yasmin's response. Yasmin, what will you have done by 2025? I will have finished my master at Gosh, Yasmin will have finished 
her master's. His master. Yeah, you can say master's or master's degree. Both are correct. Master's, master's degree. Some people only say master's because it's faster. Master's degree um, in administration. Yes. Administration. This, there's another explanation for this, Jackie. And um, I, I don't explain it this way because it's a little confusing, but I'm going to try. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this to you in Spanish. El futuro el, eh, el futuro perfecto se usa para hablar sobre eventos o acciones en el pasado cuando las ves desde el futuro. All right. So right now it's 2020, right? And my question is, what will you have done by 2025? Por eso nos vamos a poner en 2025 y vamos a ver hacia atrás. All right? And, 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 that, and this is what it means. It's like reflecting. It's like reflecting on the past, but really is the future. But it's the past when you put yourself into the future. Jackie, does your head hurt? Because mine does. <laughs> and uh, what do you what do you say, Jackie? Okay, uh, I think uh, we don't in Spanish we don't use a lot the future perfect, but I think is a hecho something. I think this is a trans translation, the translate. Yes. It's like saying, para ese entonces, da, 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 da. you know? Yes. It's kind of like that, but uh -huh. I don't know. That one, that one is crazy. But um, it, in English, it's not common either. Trust me, nobody. Uh, the only person I know, you know, all of my friends are American. And the only person I know that says this, the future perfect is me, because I am the English teacher of my friends. All of the other ones, they are accountants. They are math teachers. They are engineers so i'm the only one that can speak you know proper english so trust me in normal conversations this is not common you know this is not common at all when i talk to my wife she doesn't say this man and we talk about the future a lot because you know that's what you do when you are in a relationship you talk about the future but nobody uses this they prefer to use will or going to, right? Will or going to, like, instead of saying, what will you have done by 2025? What are you going to do before 2025? Oh, I'm going to have a child before 2025. That is, it's easier. This right here is extremely formal, both of these. Both of these. Um, This right here, let me see if I can um, copy this.
future continuous and the future perfect, they are both very, very formal ways of speaking. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to know this because if you watch things like Gray's Anatomy, The Big Bang Theory, you know, those are very formal shows where they speak highly, where they speak very properly. And you will see this type of stuff. But also, I don't want you to worry too much. Because if you ever have a little American boyfriend, Jackie, Canadian boyfriend, or Canadian friend, or Canadian girlfriend, I don't know what's your sexuality, you know, you will never use this, probably, honestly. Just use will and use going to. But for right now, you have to know this. So let me show you how we can use this a little bit more. Please open up your student books to page 121, just like yesterday, August 8th, done 20, just like yesterday, we're going to talk about expectations, for the future. And see, it says it right here, use the future perfect for events that are in the past when you view them from the future. Who, who makes these rules, man? Who makes this? But, um, anyways, Jasmine, can you read 2A, please? Complete the conversation using the future continuous or future perfect, then, then practice with the partner. Excellent. 1A. Um, you know, we, we need to think. We have two options, right? Future continuous, future perfect. Just remember, future continuous is for things that, you know, will be happening in process. And future perfect will be things that will be finished or that will be started. One thing, one time, not continuous. So I'm going to help you with number one. And um, you do the rest. What do you think you'll be doing? five years from now. I might be working as an accountant or I might have worked as an accountant. What do you think sounds better? She will be working or she will have worked. That means finished. Think about it, we're talking about careers. Sounds better. We'll be working. Yes. Might be working as an accountant. I'll probably pass all my exams back then, by then, or will have passed all the exams by then. I'll probably be passing, I'll probably have passed. 
think about it, the exams. It's continuous or is it yes or no? What do you think, Ismael? Probably one. No, no, will is already there. It's not negative. See, will is already fermented. Oh, okay, I have not seen this. Mm. Be passing? I'll probably be passing all the exams by then. Oh, no, no, it's a star pass. Start or have? Half the start. No, this half past it. Half past. Half past. Yes. Um, why? Well, because you first you need to pass the exams and then you can work as an accountant. So you expect this to be finished. I will have passed. Okay. Look at this. The question says five years from now and this says oh i hope to graduate in two years so it's going to be continuing or it will have been finished in five years jackie by then i'll have graduated or i'll be graduating be graduating Why? Why? Okay, so the question, the question says, what do you think you'll be doing five years from now? 2025. She says, by then I'll have graduated. I hope to graduate in two years. So in five years, it will be finished. It will be finished. It will not be in process because, well, you only graduate one time. You graduate one time, right? So five years, in two years, it will be finished. It will not be happening in five years. It will happen in two. So it's going to be finished. And remember the future perfect is for completed events. This is hard. So I probably will What does PhD? It's a, it's the abbreviations for doctorate in philosophy. Or, and here we, we just say doctorates. You know, after your master's. Will be. Okay. Okay, very good. Yes, I probably will be starting my PhD, but I won't. Be finished or half finished? Half. Exactly. Half finished. I won't have finished. Okay. Um, finish this activity by yourself. Please write in pencil just in case you have a mistake. And then we're going to check it together. You have about four minutes or five. What do you think your life will be like in 10 years? Well, I hope I'll have found a partner by then and we'll have bought our home. I also hope we'll have started a family and I'll be taking 
care of the kids, but I may be working part-time too. Do you have anything different? Yes. Which one is different? I, I also hope where we start our family. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's the only one that's wrong? My teacher is a pants, no? What, what is it depend? Explain that to me. Yeah, explain that. Because if you ask me this as this question, I respond. Maybe I will. I don't know. In ten years, I don't have. In español. Okay. okay. It, it makes sense, you know, because w w what is your definition of starting a family? One child, two children, w w what is the, your definition? So it, it kind of depends, right? Now, if I, if I say, what do you think your life will be like in 10 years? I, I hope I'll be starting a family. That means in the moment, beginning but I hope I will have started, it's different. Now, the only reason, the only reason that I say this is because I hope by then and, and that means past perfect and past perfect. I also past perfect. Past perfect, uh, why? Because it says and and also. So that means that and also, all of these three things are in the same idea. And because they are the same idea, they all have to be the same tenses. All right? They have to be in the same tenses. Now, the, you cannot say I will have taken care of my kids because, well, they will still be kids. So that will be continuing. Ah, it's complicated, it's complicated. Uh, Jackie and Ismail, do you have anything to different than this? I'll be taking, I put, I write, how to take in. I'll take in. I have taken, yes, yes. Well, it, m maybe, right? If you say, I'll have taken care of my kids, maybe when they are eight years old, I'm finished. You know, t take them, take them away. But for most people, they take care of their kids until they are 18 or 19 or 20. So it will still be continuing. Yes. And um, well, let's see number three. What do you think you'll be doing when you're 60? Well, I hope I won't be working, same. I suppose I'll have retired by then. So I hope I'll be enjoying life. Me too. Maybe by then I'll have bought a yacht and I'll be sailing every day. Okay. Hold on. One moment. Do you have anything different? Have both. I've 
right? That's all? That's, that's, that's only mistake? Yes. Okay. Me too. Maybe by then I'll have bought a yacht and I'll be selling every day. Now, this is the only correct option because if I say I'll be buying, that means I'm going to be in the process. Um, maybe, you know, at, at, the, at the lake looking for the yachts, you know, like shopping. But that cannot be possible because in the next sentence it says I'll be sailing every day. Every day means it will be in progress. So first, you need to buy the yacht for you to sell every day. So you need to finish buying the yacht first. Okay? Yasmin and Ismail, any questions? No, it's a lot of information. It's a lot. Yeah. Now, let me give you some, some tips. In, in, the, in the book, it's a little difficult because like I told you earlier, remember earlier I said, ah, oh, sometimes you can use will, sometimes you can use will be or will have. And it's almost the same thing. And a lot of times both can be correct, but just because there is one small difference, everything changes. So just remember, you know, if you want to use this in life, you know, and I, and I would like for you to use this tomorrow because, you know, tomorrow we're going to practice and also for the speaking, um, I, I want you to think about it, you know, if it's something that's going to be in progress, you know, algo que estarás haciendo, it will be the continuous. And something, que, something that que ya habrás hecho, then it will be the future perfect. It's easier, it's easier when you can express it. Because you know what you want to express. In the book, it's difficult because you have to understand the person's mind. And it's very difficult to understand a person's mind when you don't know that person. So for your homework, this is what I want you to do. I want you to write three sentences with the future continuous and three sentences with the future perfect and also you know give context give context because if if you don't give context then it's not gonna make sense. You know, if I say, I will have graduated, and then the next sentence, I will be graduating. And you know, th that's not gonna help you because you're not giving yourself context. The best thing to do is give context. So you can say, um, right now it is my last year of high school. So in 2022, I will have graduated. Why? Because it's your last year, and obviously in one year, you're going to finish. So in two years, it will be finished. So you can use the future perfect. All right. And for the, for the future continuous, you can say, well, right now I am learning a lot of languages. So in 10 years, I will be working as a translator. That is my goal. You can give context one sentence before or one sentence after so you know so you can present it to us 
tomorrow. Okay, does that sound, is that okay? Can you do that? No. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take that as a yes. And Jackie and Ismail, can you do that? Yes, I will try it. Ismail, can you do that? Yeah, all right, Terry. All right, great. Well, I can't wait to hear your sentences, all right? I will talk to you guys tomorrow, okay? Have a great day, guys. Nice evening. See Tomorrow's you. the review. Mm. Okay? So please be early. See ya.